Well, welcome to the 700 Club Canada. What a week we've been having with Bill Markham, our guest of the week. Thanks for being with us, Bill. It's been great. Well, it's been a great week as we've been just covering the nation in prayer, starting in the east and moving west and meeting some incredible guests, doing some incredible things and just giving us some prayer points to really focus in on. Yeah. And what a powerful time we've had with oh, each of them. Oh, and, my goodness. And so yeah. we're super excited as we move west. We finish off the week in the west. That's right. So today we're going to be praying through the prairies into British Columbia. And in order to help us do that, we've invited two of our guests uh, onto our show today. Caitlin Say is here from Saskatoon uh, and also Anne Miranda from British Columbia. Thank you, ladies, Welcome. for joining us. We're so glad you're here. Thanks for having us. Great to see you. Um, Caitlin, why don't we start with you and would you just share your heart in regards to the prairies and, and uh, you're in Saskatoon, but in regards to the prairies, what does God put on your heart for prayer for, for that place in Canada? Sure, well, like the rest of the nation, it's such an interesting time in a lot of ways in this COVID unknown season. Um, but also a big, you know, a big deal for all of us right now is this topic of racial reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And that's not a, a new topic that's important. It's always been important. Um, and I think of, you know, in Saskatchewan in 2016, um, we had we had the shooting of Colton Bushy, which really got national attention and mm -hmm. and, uh, and and began some just controversy and conversation. And then um, we, we in the fall of 2019 here in Saskatchewan as well, um, there was the crisis declared on Makwa, Sagagan First Nation, where mm -hmm. it just became national attention that our young people are facing uh, difficulty and devastation and there were several suicides and uh, attempts very close together yeah. and so our nation was was paying attention to these things and now in this context um, with the the George Floyd tragedy and Black Lives Matter discussions we have incredible opportunity as the church to be discussing the need for reconciliation and in particular to be empowering and equipping our young people yes, yes. here uh, in this in in this province and in this season. And I know that that uh, goes far beyond just the prairies, um, mm -hmm. but we want to be praying for that. In John 17, Jesus talks about the unification of the church, mm -hmm. that we are one just yeah. as he and the father are one so mm -hmm. that Jesus can be known and made yeah. famous. Yeah. And so we want to just be praying for that, for our young people, for the next generation to really rise with hope and courage and be that voice piece for the nation. Oh, that's so good. Caitlin, thank you. That's so good. We're going to do that. And just before we get there, Anne, uh, would you share with us your heart, that what God's put on your heart for the West? Yeah, thanks, Lori. I totally uh, believe that this season is challenging, yet we've been able to see victory, like <laughs> like be expedited mm. victories and people coming to know Christ in the most crazy, mm. un, um, untraditional ways, the unorthodox ways. Right. In their loneliness, God is showing up and we get to enter in these stories. So my heart is truly for the church to be mobilized. Yeah. The platform mm. of preaching and teaching in a church setting, in a church building, it has changed. It has forever changed. Yes. And the platform or the stage, I think, always should have been, but has become very evident that it's our personal lives as yeah. believers. That's right. So my heart is that the church in the West and across the country would awaken to truly that there, our lives are a stage. I know that's like, like Shakespeare, our life is a stage, but yeah. our actual <laughs> body, our life, our story is the stage. Yes. So yeah. we can share the gospel and share the joy of the Lord truly mm -hmm. with those that are feeling fear and anxiety and just this whirlwind of torment that's happening, yeah, that's right. overwhelming. Uh, yet we are joy carriers as yeah, believers. That's, that's and right. so that is my heart, truly, that the church would just share the good mm. news because we got some good news to share. We certainly do. That's great, eh, Bill? Yeah, well, I was just thinking, too, I think as you're speaking, I'm reminded that maybe in our culture we've become a little complacent mm -hmm. and we thought our joy was in all this stuff, um, whether it was in the church world or not. And now with all that gone, it really has challenged the joy. And I love the idea of the, our young people, the next generation going, where, what is joy then? And we have the opportunity to bring that with the good news we've got. And so 
Yeah, thank you for doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. amazing. And yeah, so, both both pastors, we bless yeah. you in your ministries. Caitlin, would you start our prayer? We're doing a prayer circle now. Would you start our prayer circle yeah. off? And then Anne will have uh, you go next. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Yes. Thank you that as the world is changing and as there's new challenges and new anxieties, you are un changing God. And we can rest in the fact that you will be faithful to carry your church through every challenge in amazing ways. God, we look to you to be our hope and our strength. And Lord, we do. We lift up the next generation of Canadians right yes. from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you would be inspiring young people to stand up and to speak, to be inspired in your truth, to know the hope of the gospel deep inside of who they mm -hmm. are. And Lord, would yes. you continue to empower your church as a mouthpiece to the nation mm -hmm. during yes. this season yes. of unknowns, of questions, when the name of God is being Googled more than any other time mm -hmm. on the planet. Lord, would you show yourself to be the answer to every problem? Yes. Father, would you empower and oh, activate Jesus. your church in the ways that you have designed the church to be meeting the needs of the world right now? Now, yeah. God, would we be enveloped in your love and empowered to love one another and mm -hmm. our world in ways, God, that are new, that we haven't experienced before, and that really would shine your glory to our nation. Mm -hmm. We ask it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. in Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Lord, I'm just so encouraged that we get to pray mm -hmm. for our nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get to we get to publicly raise our voice and come before you right now and, and ask for your mercy on our provinces, the ministries that we lead, this country. Lord, your word says that you've given us living hope because of the resurrection yes. of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that we would carry that hope and share it. Would you mobilize your church, those sons and daughters that you have positioned for such a time as this yes. in the generation? It's our watch now. Yes. God, it's yes. our watch. Yes. You, <laughs> Nothing is surprising you. You have called us. Yes. You have sent us forth. You have qualified us. Yes. You've given us our stories so that we can share this amazing good news that has transformed our lives, God. Would we uh, just be confident in that news, in that good news? Lord, would we hang on to your, your word? Would you inspire your sons and daughters to go back to your word, mm -hmm. to search you, to know you, to have relationship with you and our loneliness? outside of the platform, outside of the temples, the church buildings, God, mm -hmm. would you resurrect in us this understanding that we are your temple, mm -hmm. that we are your dwelling place, and would you empower us, deposit, like your word says in Psalms, you put joy in our hearts, that mm -hmm. you repeat it in Isaiah, you take our shame, and you give us everlasting joy. Mm -hmm. I pray, God, we would walk in that we would yes. operate as joy carriers mm -hmm. and share your hope mm -hmm. and your joy to a world that is so broken mm -hmm. and needing of you so desperately yes thank you Lord. yes and father i am just reminded in your word in the prophet joel where a promise was given that you would pour out your spirit on all people mm -hmm. young and old from every nation mm -hmm. and these are the days where we need a, a fresh outpouring of your spirit and so we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, that this would happen in our nation from sea to sea to sea. God, that you would be known and you would transform hearts and minds because we know you are the only hope. And thank you that you've deposited that in us. So give us this joy mm -hmm. everywhere we go. May in a world of fear, we be bearers of faith and joy because this is what the world desperately needs. Thank you for the good news that saves us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I just stand in agreement with everything that's been <laughs> prayed today and throughout yes. this week. May our prayers never stop. May our nation be 
on their knees and up on their feet and quickly distributing in their life the good news of Jesus through word and through deed. May our nation turn to you in this hour, in this day, in this time. And as a body of Christ, may we just demonstrate how wonderful and beautiful and joy-filled and loving you are. Mm -hmm. And would many turn to you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you, Caitlin and Anne. Really yes. appreciate you. You're world changers. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for being Thank with us this week. Keep praying, Canada. Uh, we'll be right back with a powerful story of healing. I had just woken up from a coma that doctors had given me less than a 10% chance of surviving, and I felt nothing but disappointment that I was still alive. When I was 21, I was a senior in college, going to a small school in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was married at the time, and my whole world kind of started to unravel. I started getting more and more depressed and just overwhelmed. I was taking a really heavy course load. I started dressing in all black. I stopped sleeping, stopped eating. I lost like 30 pounds in a month and I was just a mess. I also started having all of these flashbacks to some abuse that had happened when I was a child. The abuse went on for about four years. It was incredibly terrifying. My solution was that a God that was real wouldn't have let any of that stuff happen to me. And in the absence of God, life had no meaning. I had six bottles of prescription pills and I lined them all up on the table and chased them with a bottle of vodka. Fire department broke down my door. They found me on the floor. My heart stopped in the ambulance and I was put on life support. And they gave me about a 10% chance of ever waking up. When I woke up, all I felt was disappointed that it didn't work. I had a couple of more suicide attempts, many more hospitalizations. I had ended up divorced. I had to file for bankruptcy. My friends kind of just all disappeared and I had nothing, literally nothing. And I was at rock bottom. I called up a new therapist and I said, I just spent the last two and a half years of my life talking about every bad thing that has ever happened to me. And I just don't want to talk about it anymore. I would go three times a week and talk to her about how to put one foot in front of the other. I started to recover from the depression, but I never recovered from the loss of faith. I met Chuck, my husband. I loved him so much and we were great together and we had a great life. And yet, even with everything that we had, it felt, it always felt like there was still something missing. We started attending church kind of reluctantly and the people there were just, so nice and so welcoming. And we had been feeling so lonely for so long that it was sort of like, it was nice. And finally one day, I just remember sitting there in church and going, okay, God, I, I give up, you can have me. And that was it. It was this just moment of peace and clarity and knowing that that was where I was supposed to be. And it was amazing. It was almost like I had been standing in front of a tapestry, you know, and I was this close and I couldn't see the whole picture. But when, when God pulled me back and I was able to see that, you know, through everything that I had gone through, He was always putting the right people in the right place at the right time. There is hope, even if you can't see it right now. Our salvation happens despite everything that we do. We are saved not because of what we do, but because of what has been done for us. And despite the fact that I had turned my back on him, he never turned his back on me. Well, she said it, okay, I give up, you can have me. You see, that's when you come to the end of yourself and you actually turn around, you get new life. You are, you actually become brand new when you'll let the old go. We get really stuck holding onto the past, don't we? We get really stuck holding onto our pain. And for many, that's where they stay in life. But see, that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to say, I've come to give you life and life to the full. This is the truth of the gospels. You see, Christianity isn't a religion, it's a relationship 
with Jesus, the one who gives us hope, the one who heals us. Listen to what the Bible says in Ephesians 2, uh, 8 through 10. This is in the Living Translation. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us, us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Do you see the gospel is all about entering into the good things that God already has planned for you. That's why we give out this resource called a new day. If you want a new day, a new turnaround in your life, you need to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I give up. I surrender everything to you. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you came and died for me and I receive your life by faith. I want to follow you the rest of my life. Make me brand new in Jesus' name. Give us a call. We're here to pray with you. We want to give you this resource. And now a look at how to find a place of stillness and silence before the Lord. Whenever I hear the word secret place, you know, I immediately think of the 91st Psalm, you know, where it says that they who dwell in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And uh, I love that imagery. You know, Jesus said, abide in me and you'll bear fruit. And so he connects this bearing fruit in our lives, the fruit of the Spirit with abiding in this secret place. And I love that he says, under the shadow of his wing, like what a... What a picture of like being covered, of being protected. You know, to me, the secret place is my place of refuge. It's my place of protection. Uh, but then also this idea of being overshadowed by the Almighty. Like we think about Mary and she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and she became pregnant with the will of heaven, like literally. So for me, my life can't become pregnant and full of heaven's purposes until I'm overshadowed in the secret place. Well, the secret place is that place where we spend time with God alone, where we're most vulnerable and we share heart to heart. When Jesus died, he paved the way for us to come in God's presence daily. And that place is open and it's a place of welcome where God is welcoming us to come. And it's a place of acceptance for us to come. His arms are wide open for us to, to share our heart to share who we are and to seek Him for who He is. And it's, it's a place of, of transformation. Like the heart to seek the Lord is the secret place. And someone who's willing to, anyone who's willing to step aside from what's in front of them and, and like present that hunger for what God has to say. And not just what He has to say, but just to see Him. It's the empowering presence that comes in your weakness, in your fears in your vulnerability, in your flesh. And God takes this brokenness of our life and He transforms you into something so beautiful that only He can do. And He puts you together in a way that looks at you and says, oh my God, only God can do this for this person. I find that first thing in the morning to kind of pull away and just talk to God. Like, I, I don't want to talk to anybody. Even when my kids were little, I didn't want to talk to them until I had my time with the Lord, where He's talking to me and I'm talking to Him. And it's normally right here in this room in that chair and just having that encounter with Him personally and each day just saying, speak, Lord, your servant's listening, because I know you have something to say to me. My prayer closet's got four wheels and <laughs> is normally cruising down the, the highway, um, you know, commuting to and from work. Um, that's the place where um, I'm just alone with God and I, I can, I mean, a lot of people turn on their radio. A lot of times I'm turning my radio off because I'm raising four little kids. So my home is not always the quietest place to get alone with God. It's, I don't even have a closet large enough that I could fit in. You know, I'd like to equate the secret place as to a strong marriage. A strong marriage is falling in love with your spouse all over again, again and again and again. The same way even with Jesus. He wants you to fall in love with him all over again. 
For my wife and I, we live at the oceanfront, and um, our prayer closet is often the beach. <laughs> it's uh, it's walking along the shore. I mean, we, we do it almost every day. Um, we just walk along the shore, and we just the Lord just speaks to us there, you know. And we process with each other. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes the prayer closet isn't always a place where you're alone. Maybe you're with your husband or your wife or your spouse or a friend, you know, um, and, and you're together. You're engaging and connecting intimately with the Holy Spirit. That secret place is just, I'm hungry for Him, and. So a secret place can look like so many different things, um, but it's, it's really defined by the heart. What an amazing week, eh, Bill? I mean, I just can't get enough of this. I wish there, there were more five days in the week. You know, I, I to agree. Pray. Well, I've been, I've been just so encouraged mm -hmm. by our guest. I've been inspired with this powerful thought that for some of you, your prayer is going to be answered. Mm -hmm. I actually believe that. I was thinking about that as we were looking through the prayer requests and those that have been prayed for. Yeah. And I just believe that some of you, this is your week yeah. of deliverance. And for others, it may be a season of perseverance, but God always shows up he does. in his time in the best he way does. possible. He does. So I think I think perseverance and prayer have been the theme of my life. Absolutely. And you know what? It's not perseverance like drudgery. It's about being in relationship. Absolutely. So it's actually a joy to go on the journey with God in your in your persevering. So do not give up on prayer because in due time, scripture tells us, you will see an answer. Yeah, right? well, and I love this Psalm really quickly, just this, yeah. this declaration for all of you at the end of this week, it says, praise be to the Lord for he has heard my cry for mercy. Wow. And I know one thing, God has heard us and he's moving. And so that's a powerful and amazing thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I thank you so much for watching, for being part. Maybe you're just new to the program or maybe you've watched for a while, but we, we want to partner with you in prayer across our nation and also in support of this ministry so that we can get this program out into more places and reach more people. Can't do it without you. So why don't you partner with us and send us a gift. It could be your thank you gift. It could be just an extra measure of something that God puts on your heart, we'll send you our 30-day devotional, Hope and Courage. And when you call this week, uh, you'll get some bookmarks and a special resource on prayer. So numbers on the screen, give us a call. We're here for you. We love you. And let's keep praying for our nation together. Bill, what, just in final thoughts in closing as you leave us, I thank you again for being with us this week. It's it been was, a privilege. It was great. And thanks for you. just being with us too. Yeah. Um, you matter. You matter to God. You matter to this world, and I hope you've been inspired and encouraged with your part. You can make a difference with God's help. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. thank thank you, Bill. Stay my, encouraged. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you. And now a special performance of Now and Forever by Mark Masary and Canada United. I've loved this song all week. It's been beautiful. It has. Enjoy. I lift my eyes to mountains high. Where does my hair come from? I lift my eyes to mountains high. comes from you.
qui a fait le ciel et la terre. It comes from you, my God, maker of heaven and earth, both now and forever, both now and forever, now and forever. You watch me come and go, both now and forever, both now and forever, both now and forever. I won't stumble, I won't fall, no, no. I won't stumble, I won't fall, fall. My, God. my God, my God, To contact us, visit 700club.ca.